Jody Emerson, and it's my pleasure to welcome you guys to tonight's or this afternoon's listening session on the People's Budget. Um, I'm so glad to see so many friends and neighbors here tonight, and I'm honored to welcome Governor Evers and Lieutenant Barnes to Eau Claire. Thank you for, for coming. This isn't the first time that they've been here since they've been elected, which is a welcome change. Um, I don't recall this happening in the last eight years where we had some open sessions where we could just go and meet with our governor, our lieutenant governor, and, and these two are doing this all around the state right now. And on behalf of Wisconsin, thank you guys for what you're doing. So. I am now pleased to uh, introduce my friend and our senator um, from this area, Senator Jeff Smith. Bill says I'm her friend. That's, that's, we're, we're doing okay so far. I also want to say that this is, my, this is my hometown. This is where I grew up. I am so proud of Eau Claire, and I'm, and I'm especially proud when I see a crowd like this because you know who makes a difference in this world? The people who show up. And that's who you are, and I know a lot of people who would like to be here can't be here, so you, hopefully whatever you learn tonight you're going to share, and you're going to share with us what your thoughts about this budget are. And again, we are so pleased to have the leaders of our state with us today. And particularly, I get the opportunity and uh, to introduce my man, Mandela Barnes. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Jody. Uh, Representative Emerson, thank you so much. Uh, Jeff, Senator Smith, it's always great to be back here uh, in Eau Claire. It is a great time. I always think about... The morning I woke up and just dog ate my breakfast, so <laughs> it is, uh, <laughs> that, is a, that is a very true story, so it always en encourages me to be more early to rise, so uh, again, I just want to thank you all for being here. I'm Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes. I want to thank the five folks at Chippewa Valley, Technical Valley College for hosting us tonight. Let's give them a round of applause. thrilled that we're going to be here talking about the people's budget once again. Uh, we are on round two of the tour. We started the uh, tour before the budget was formally introduced, and now that the budget has been introduced, uh, we're doing a little wraparound session where we're still continuing to have those necessary conversations because there are a lot of people in the legislature that still don't seem to get it. Uh, so with that being said, three months ago, Governor, e Governor Evers and I traveled throughout the state. Uh, we learned the needs and concerns uh, from people like you all who are in this room today. Uh, we actually took the time to listen, and which was a uh, welcome change from what had been the case uh, in years past. And what we learned was that Wisconsin was not working for everybody. Uh, not the way that it should be. Things like health care, education, our roads, and the environment were being sorely neglected. So we took the feedback and we came up with a budget. And this budget isn't Tony Evers' budget, it's not a Democrat's budget. It is truly a people's budget. A budget that will work for all of Wisconsin. A budget for all of us. And now we're bringing it back to the people to learn more about how this budget will impact the lives of you, your families, your communities. And tonight we are back again to listen, to learn about how we best put Wisconsin back on the right path to move us forward the way that we should be going. A path that will make us healthier, more productive, and a state where everybody can thrive. So again, thank you all for being here today to help us learn about what this budget means to you. And it is my pleasure to introduce the governor of Great State of Wisconsin, Tony Please have a seat. Thank you. And Mandela, thank you for your great work and uh, uh, being such a good partner. This is uh, it's a really important evening, and I, I have to just start off by talking about the President Barker and the people at the Chippewa Valley Technical College. They're great help in making this happen. I've had the opportunity, both as state superintendent and now as governor, to visit this campus, and uh, I've always been very impressed with the work that, that, that is done here. And, just outstanding students and outstanding uh, administration and teachers. So it's great to be here, and of course, Senator Smith and Representative Emerson, thank you for your good work and for being here and for uh, kicking this off. And there's a lot of other elected officials here in the audience, along with members of my cabinet, and I, instead of making a mistake and trying to introduce everybody, I'm gonna have everybody stand. And elected officials, cabinet of, uh, members, and 
these, these listening sessions have been great, and I, I have to tell you, the, uh, having the, these legislators come, and uh, not just from this area, and it, it, people have been coming from all across, representing all across the state to, to all these sessions, and so it's been very great, and I know it's taken a lot of time out of your time, but I thank you for, for doing that. So, a few months ago, as Mindell talked about, uh, after the election, we traveled all across the state. We, we had listening sessions, and uh, there's Terry Dowman. Hi. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Good, to see you. Good to see you, Terry. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. I apologize. Anyway, uh, we were traveling all across the state listening to people. And uh, uh, we, we are creating this budget, and this budget, frankly, is the, uh, this is where policy is made in the state of Wisconsin, uh, in the budget. And so we wanted to spend the time listening to people. We had these sessions all across the state, and uh, we did it a little differently. Uh, we said, whoever wants to show up, shows up. We weren't pre-selecting anybody. We weren't closing the door. People didn't have to sign up and uh, put their name in blood. They came, and they talked to us. And uh, we listened, and we put together that budget. And we think it's a very progressive budget that uh, really gets at the things that people in the state of Wisconsin are talking about, making sure that we have a great K through 20 education system, making sure that we take, tackle the issue of uh, criminal justice reform, have great health care system that's accessible and affordable, and actually fix the darn roads. Uh, all those things people talked about, and we're going to be talking about them again tonight. So we introduced that budget, and uh, uh, again, as I said, the reception has been good. But what we wanted to do is go back out and listen some more. People know now what the budget is, and if you don't, you will have people at these small groups that can help you uh, uh, help answer the questions about what is in the budget. But most importantly, once again, we are here to listen. Have you react to those, bu those budget items, those policy items, and uh, so that we can make sure that everybody understands how important this, uh, this budget is. We have a chance, frankly, to change the direction of the state of Wisconsin, and I, I really appreciate your efforts uh, being here tonight. The other thing that's been very interesting in all the sessions, but especially post-budget, uh, post is that uh, these sessions are, are very cool because what happens is people are voicing their opinion, but then they build off each other. And, uh, and it's not that we're looking for consensus to be built, but that's democracy in action. Actually, the Kenosha News uh, used that term. And I, I take that as a, um, not necessarily, not, this isn't me, because we're going to be listening, but it's, it's important that the people of the state have a voice. And this is, one, this is a really important way to do that. So I appreciate that. So we've heard people building on each other's ideas. We've actually seen people that are angry with each other occasionally and saying, you said this, I don't agree with that. But we have facilitators at the ta at, in each group. We have policy people in each group so that we are able to have a great conversation. At the end of the day, we will be having a couple more of these uh, going around the state, and that will help us you know, do our work as far as advocating for you. But we also need you to advocate also. This is important that people um, understand the, uh, the importance of this, of this budget and the, and the policy pieces in there. So we're hoping at the end of the day, and I'll come and talk at the end of the evening with you about this, but it's important that we have an active citizenry on this budget, and I think we can accomplish some really extraordinarily important things. So thanks for being here. I'll be talking to you at the end. And now Stephanie Hilton is going to come up here and explain the process. Stephanie? Um, my name is Salika duxworth Lawton, and I'm here to talk about criminal justice reform and especially crimeless revocation, which are administrative rules that people in parole can violate. There's a lot of them. It makes it very hard for them to avoid going back to jail. And sending people back to jail for things that are not crimes really is a waste of money. 
on top of that, I think we have criminalized too many things and we need to think about what we criminalize. It's too easy for people to go to jail for things that in the past no one would have gone to jail for. For instance, kids in schools are in the criminal justice system for fist fights. In my day, that was a detention. Today, it can be a felony. There was a lot of testimony yesterday in River Falls on this particular topic and some very moving stories from some people who have been in and out of the system, not necessarily for any good reason, apparently. I, um, I was the mentor for a girl who was sent to the Wisconsin Challenge Academy boot camp at Fort McCoy because she got in a fist fight as a 16-year-old with a 15-year-old over a boy. The two girls were one month apart. Because of that, the 15-year-old was charged as a juvenile. She was charged with felony child abuse. When I was in school, both girls would have gotten an in-school suspension and their parents would have battled them. I think that criminalizing ordinary child behavior is creating a system where people can't get jobs. It's creating a system where we're wasting too much time, too much time and money on putting people in jail and not enough money on the things we need, like mental health care, like education. So I'd like to see us really think about this over-regulation that in some ways it gets money for the state, but it doesn't serve our citizens. Thank you very much. I want to talk a little bit about what, what you just, the participation we had tonight and the good, um, good turnout, good, good observations. And, but I first want to thank all the people behind me. And be, these are some folks that are from the Eau Claire area, most of them are not. And uh, for all of them, I, I'm just so appreciative of their support and actually reaching out to people and, and getting people's voices heard. So tonight was again one of those uh, really special nights for me personally as governor. Uh, people of the Eau Claire area did not disappoint. Uh, for those of you who had a chance to listen to the conversations at the, t at the tables, they were um, high, high emotion, high quality. Uh, people were connecting the dots on their own. Uh, they were talking about things that are important to them and having neighbors and friends and others complete strangers saying, I agree with you, I disagree with you. It was uh, a great event and I, I wasn't surprised either. I, during the campaigns when I state superintendent, the people in the fair area are engaged in their lives and uh, care about what happens in Madison. So it's good for us to get outside that bubble and we did tonight. So I, Mandela, you may have some other Yeah, no, it was a really wonderful time getting to hear from people here about what the issues uh, are of, not just of the day, but uh, of most people's just entire lives. And uh, he has some really compelling stories about health care, uh, about education, about environmental issues, all things that have been in neglect for a really long time, especially over the last eight years. And people are looking for a path forward. And together, it's, with that input, is how we came up with the budget. And it's with the same input, it's how we're going to move forward. Good. And what, what it does too, I, I talk about connecting the dots until people get ill keep saying that, but the, the bottom line is that uh, if we can connect those dots in people's minds and legislators' minds to understand how important each of these issues are collectively and not just individually. And so that's one of the main reasons we're doing this event. So with that, we're glad to answer any questions that you might have. Yes. Yeah, you mentioned there was a lot of emotion out there. I even saw some tears shed as yeah. some people were talking about um, like jail reentry programs, things like that. Um, you know, how important is it going to be to take this testimony then, as you do look to get this budget of yours approved? Yeah, it, it, that is such a wonderful question because it is. We have a bubble that's surrounding the Capitol, and that type of emotion and that type of uh, genuineness. It's hard to capture that, to take back, but we, all of us here are going, are going to do that. That's the good thing about having legislators from all across the state. And you're right, uh, in, in every group uh, there was at least one or two folks that were uh, uh, telling their life stories that uh, we just have to continue to do that. And uh, that's, that's, that's one of my most important parts of my job, frankly. So do you have plans now going forward to sit down with any of the Republican lawmakers on the other side? to sort of maybe come together prior to that July 1st deadline? 
and well, prior to the Joint yes. Finance Committee. Yeah, and I'll say I met with over 100 of the legislators already uh, since I've become governor, and it's, it's been very worthwhile. We have met with leadership a few times, and we will continue to meet with them on a, on a regular basis. And I, what I'll be doing is, is sharing with them the things that I've heard at, at these sessions. Clearly, we'd like to finish the budget on time, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll be in that position. I just, I, 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 I am fearful that uh, uh, some people aren't listening to the will of the people, whether it's like we heard tonight or what the Marquette poll recently said. Using example is 70% uh, of the people say they want uh, a Medica Medicaid expansion in the state. Well, the Republicans have put a pretty stout wall there for us to cross, across saying, at least the leadership is saying, no way in hell. Well, really. I mean, we heard it again tonight, we heard it in Market University poll. We have to make sure that we, we continue to engage the leadership on these issues and others. Well, one important point, too, you said you met with over 100 legislators. Let the record reflect, there are only 50 Democrats in the legislature. <laughs> so, exactly. you're meeting people on both sides. Yes. Related question, I guess, I mean, with the Republicans saying they're going to just write their own budget, why does all this matter? I mean, how, how are you going to... You know, I have the strong, right. yeah, I have the strongest veto pen in the country. Right. Uh, so they might not get some things that they feel very strongly about. And uh, I'll, I'll use whatever I can that is at my disposal to make sure that we at least get a point where we can reach common ground. You know, if they want to start with their own budget, they do it as, at their own peril. I will see that. And people have been ignored for long enough. Yeah. It's important for us to be here, regardless of with the legislators who are you know, existing in their own gerrymander bubbles, regardless of what they think, they, they, we are still going to support the will of the people. And that's why it's important for us to be here. Yeah, but two last, more questions here. You've done these sessions in several parts of the state at this point. <clears throat> Have you seen any really strong differences in concerns in different areas, or is it pretty much the same? Uh, the topics are the same, but the... Uh, uh, I think some of the answers are different. I mean, I'll use transportation as an example. Heard a lot uh, tonight about uh, non-traditional, at least for, for Wisconsin, non-traditional modes of transportation, such as trains and mass transit. And uh, we hear that, heard that also in, in southeast Wisconsin in, in previous times. So I think there are different answers to different, to some of the same, same issues. But I also will say that having been uh, in Superior last night, and uh, in Eau Claire to some extent, although they, they say up north is actually further north than here. But there, there, I think there are parts of the state where they where people think that they're not being heard, and uh, and I would say northern Wisconsin adds that flavor to the conversation. Absolutely, it's different. Last question. All right, so <laughs> you have to ask. Have to ask one there. So, all right, so now that you've heard all of these different testimonies from people, are there any changes that you would make at this point to your budget as it sits? I would say probably not, but it helps us. It helps us uh, communicate better around the budget. Uh, I, I think that's an important thing. Uh, I think there's things that we could probably emphasize more in, in, in some areas less. You know, for, for example, when, um, when we first started on, on this journey, uh, pr just after the election, um, prior to the, during the election, we heard some around criminal justice reform, but we've, I've heard, and I know you have also heard, uh, lots more about that. And so that's something that is, uh, not that it's a higher priority, but I think we want to communicate more about that than we have, have in the past. So I think it's more about how we message that. And, you know, criminal justice reform is a good example around that. As we as we think about what, what we're doing there, that that impacts housing, that impacts that impacts uh, uh, education issues, and so it, we're we're going to be able to use these these opportunities to connect those dots and re and emphasize some things more. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Good to see everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.